which is the best electric car between the new Audi e-tron GT and the Tesla Model S. Well, to find out in this video, I'm going to compare their exteriors, their interiors, their technology, see what they like to drive and test out their performance. I also want to compare their real world ranges, their energy usage and how quick they can charge. And to do that, I'm going to race them from here in Inverness in the north of Scotland, all the way to London, a journey of almost 600 miles and we'll see which car gets there first. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. So let me tell you about the rules of engagement. We're leaving Inverness right now. We've fully charged the cars up. We have reset their computers. The idea is that we are going to try to get back to London as quickly as possible. So we're gonna to have to plan our charging and manage our battery usage. However, while we will run in efficiency mode or range mode for the Tesla, what we're going to do is drive like you normally would. We want to be real world, realistic, how you drive these cars. And we will see which one can actually get a long distance quicker than the other. Now, to help me with this challenge, I've got an electric car expert along with me. His name is Richard Simons, and he actually owns that Tesla Model S, and he runs a YouTube channel called RSEV. If you want to check that out, there's loads of cool videos on electric cars. The link is in the description. So, Richard, tell me, which car do you think is going to win? I think it's going to be really close. Tesla's got phenomenal range, but that Audi claims really fast charging speed, so it's going to be a close one, I think. What's your money on? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, I put a pin comment there. You vote which car you think is going to win. We'll find out if you got it right. So here in the very north of Scotland, it looks stunning, which brings me on to the design of this Audi e-tron GT. I think this is its best looking car at the moment, apart from maybe the R8. Really think they've done a great job with it. Just the shape of it, it just works, looks really sporty. Then there's the lights, the ones at the front do like clever dances and stuff when you open and close the car. You've got a lovely full length light bar across the back. I like the alloy wheel designs, you get 20 inch alloys as standard. This RS model is on 21s. And then there's the fact that this car is a range topping carbon four spring model. So it gets extra bits of carbon on it. You've got a carbon fiber roof and it also helps reduce the weight. Although <laughs> it's a little bit kind of irrelevant to tell you the truth. Because this car still comes in at around 2.3 tons. Now you might be thinking, Matt, it's an electric car. Why has it got a grill? Well, I think there's two reasons. One, is the fact that it's a familiar Audi grill, so you recognize the face. And then there's the fact it gives them some place to hide the sensors for all the self-driving tech. It's also the first Audi grill you can have body colored. It looks quite cool, just like the weather outside. <laughs> this is actually a good test because we are gonna drive these cars in varying conditions. It's gonna get warmer as we go south and they are both being compared in the exact same conditions. Makes it interesting. Audi isn't just good at exterior design, it's probably even better at interior design, and this car is the best interior design of any Audi to date, if you ask me. I absolutely love it. It's sporty, it feels sophisticated, and it doesn't feel overly like electric car-y. It just feels natural and quality really good. This one's got the carbon fiber bits inserted here in the door and on the dash, which are part of that carbon fiber pack. And then you've got the classic Audi digital dials, really clear, really easy to use, give you all the information you need. And then the main infotainment system, it's good enough, wireless connectivity, navigation, it's easy to swipe through the different functions. But really, don't use any of that at all. I always just plug in my phone and use Android Auto. And if you've got Apple CarPlay, you can use that as well, obviously. One thing I do like, is this the climate control buttons they're separate they're physical buttons much easier to suddenly just change the temperature like that of course if you want to you can use the voice commands but that can be a bit hit and miss really nice interior like it a lot oh look classic scotland it's raining and classic audi this is not a cheap car so the e-tron gt starts from just under eighty-one thousand pounds but if you want an rs model they start from just under one hundred twelve thousand pounds Thankfully, you can save money on your cars through CarWow. And if you want to do that after the video, just simply Google Help Me CarWow. And me and my team will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. And on average, people save £2,900 through CarWow, FYI. Now, if you'd like to see an electric car that is a lot cheaper and I've got a great deal on through CarWow, I've got a link to that there, my pick there. Click on that link, you can go check out what that car is. 
I've jumped into the back of the e-tron GT to check out the practicality. I've got cameraman Lewis driving. He's just over six foot, and despite that, I've still got plenty of knee room. Now I'm about five foot ten and a half, and if I sit up straight, I've got barely any head room. Someone over six foot will be rubbing their head on this rather lovely headlining. Another problem is I can't really stretch out my feet underneath the seat in front because the front seats are positioned quite low. However, I don't have that problem like you get in many electric cars where you feel like your knees are up around your ears because of all the batteries underneath the floor means it's raised quite high. Reason is, is that there's a cutaway in the batteries in the foot wells. How do you call that? Foot garages. And it does mean that you don't feel like kind of you're in a stressed position when you're going on longer journeys. One thing that is a bit stressful though is if you need to load a baby seat to this car because the doors aren't that big, so it's a bit of a faff to get those big bulky seats in. Um, when you're going on longer journeys, you might fold down this armrest and then you end up with your arm like that in the cup holder. I wish they'd just cover that up. This is an expensive car, but this is good. Look, you can fold down the middle seat there and use it for through loading if you need to. But if you have someone sat there, they're not really going to enjoy it because it's quite a small seat and there's a big hump in the floor in the middle, which is a bit annoying. Seats themselves are comfy. This leather's nice, but if you don't want leather, you can get a vegan-friendly interior, which is made up from recycled stuff. In terms of the practicality, the boot on this car isn't great. It's a saloon boot, so you don't have a wide opening. And the capacity isn't particularly large. You can fit a human in there, and obviously I tested it by getting into the boot. Yeah, classic car wow. And it's all right, you know, it's got lots of features in the boot. There's a 12 volt socket, there's a curry hook. Obviously you can fold down the seats, but you have to do it by going around and using the levers here on the seat back, which is a bit of a faff. But once you fold down the seats, you do have a flat low bed and there's a little bit of underfloor storage as well. You've also got a front boot, but yet again, it's quite small. It's only 80 liters. And yes, I tested that as well, <laughs> getting into it. And I sort of almost got stuck because it's really quite tight in there. It's not the most practical, this car, but it is really lovely to travel in. So you get air suspension as standard, and it's really good at ironing out the bumps in the road. Here in the back, you know, it feels almost like a limousine, the way it just kind of floats up the road, nice and relaxed, even though it's riding on 21 inch alloy wheels. So too is the sound insulation. It's a quiet car, only a bit of tire noise from those big tires, but it is well suppressed. Anyway, I want to see what this car is actually like to drive, so if it's any fun, I'm going to jump back into the front seat. So, Lewis, your time's up, mate. It's my turn now. It's good to be back behind the wheel and Lewis back behind the camera where he belongs. Because it's a nice car to drive this. Not only is it relaxing, it also has a very sporty feel to it. So the steering is responsive. And while I'm just driving on some straight main roads here, I have driven a prototype version of this car on some twisty roads in Greece and it was really, really good. You forgot about the fact that it was 2.3 tonnes. It corners very flat, it's got a sporty feel to it. Obviously you've got all wheel drive because you've got a motor at the front and the back which gives you loads of traction. It is a sporty car to drive. Now heavy electric cars never feel as sporty as lighter internal combustion engine cars, they just don't. But because their centre of gravity is low because the batteries are low down in the floor, they do always have that real flat cornering feel to them which is nice. Can't experience that now <laughs> obviously because I'm just driving in a straight line. So what I've done is put the automatic cruise control on which comes as standard on this car. It's doing that thing where it's using a radar to keep me a safe distance from the car in front. It's auto steering to keep me in lane, though I do have to keep my hands on the wheel, otherwise it will disengage. But it's doing a good job. You can just chill out and just let it do all the hard work. It will even change speeds for you when you go to different speed limit zones. Let's get a little bit geeky and talk about charging and battery capacities. So the e-tron GT has a usable battery capacity of 86 kilowatt hours, and that gives you a range of 295 miles in the normal e-tron GT, but in this more powerful RS, the range goes down to 283 miles, but we'll find out exactly what the real world range is in a bit. Now, in terms of charging, if you can find one, this car can charge up to 270 kilowatts, which is insane. Find one of those chargers that can do that. It'll go from 10% full to 80% full in just 21 minutes. If you do it at a 150 kilowatt charger, it'll do that same charging range in 31 minutes. Then if you find a 100 kilowatt charger, it'll do that same charging range in 42 minutes. 
One of the great things about this e-tron GT is the performance that you get from it. So the standard car from its two electric motors delivers 476 horsepower, but if you put into launch control, that increases to 539 horsepower. You've also got 630 newton meters of torque. Go for this RS model, then as standard, it will put out 598 horsepower, but when you launch control it, that increases to 646 horsepower, which makes it the most powerful road car Audi has ever made. You've also got 830 newton meters of torque, and yeah, this thing launches really well. Audi says it'll do 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds, but I reckon they're lying. Should we find out if they are? Well, I've teleported to a different day and a runway to find out so I can launch this car in safety. So I've got my specialist timing gear here. Let's do it. Left foot on the brake, floor the throttle, ready to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, you can feel it change gear. It's got two stage gearbox for maximum performance. 2.86 seconds to 60. What's the quarter mile? Come on, 10.87. That is real quick. Okay, I've now jumped into the Tesla Model S long range. So this has dual electric motors, 546 horsepower and 755 newton meters of torque. So it's down on power compared to that RS e-tron GT, but it is light. It comes in at just over 2.1 tons. I'm gonna launch it, see how quick it is from 0 to 60 and over the sunny quarter. It's supposed to do 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds, but let's find out. Here we go, three, two, one. Oh, stuff went flying. Oh, and it's skidding a bit. What was that? Not 60, 3.58. Let's carry on for the standing quarter. I'm trying to lean forward and see my specialist timing gear here. What does it say? 12 seconds over the quarter mile. The e-tron GT is quicker. But I know what all you Tesla fanboys are saying. You're going, well, wait a minute, Matt. You had the highest performing version of the Audi. It's not fair to do the long range. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's satisfy you. Okay, so now I've jumped into a Tesla Model S long range performance. We've got about 800 horsepower and 1,000 newton meters of torque. It'll do 0 to 60 in 2.4 seconds, but we're gonna say I've got my specialist timing gear here. Unfortunately, since I've just launched the long range, it's now rained, so this is a damp track. Let's do it anyway. Lift on the brake, floor the throttle. Here we go, got into cheetah stance. It's angled like that and I'm gonna lift off the brake now. Things go flying. Oh, it's struggling for traction and I've lost my GoPro. <laughs> it's just in 2.9 seconds. <laughs> An 11.0 quarter mile. It struggled for traction there because <laughs> it's wet. 2.9 seconds to 60 miles an hour there and the quarter mile was 11 seconds pretty much. There you go Tesla fan boys, hope you're happy. Sorry it wasn't dry. Let's continue with the drive back from Inverness. I've decided to jump into the Tesla Model S for the rest of the journey back into London and there's a reason for this. So this car is averaging 252 watt hours per mile which translates to about four miles for every kilowatt hour used. That Audi was doing 2.8 miles for every kilowatt hour used. And because it's got a slightly smaller battery pack than this Tesla, in a straight out range test, this Tesla will win. So it all comes down to managing the battery and the charging times and really making good use of the Audi's fast charging rates. But to do that, you need to be able to know how to just put the minimum amount of charge in and choose the right chargers the fastest ones you can find. And Richard is gonna be much better at that than me. He is an EV ninja. Whereas I'm an EV novice. So this Tesla, which will work out exactly where I need to stop, and the fact that it's got plentiful superchargers en route is the way to go for me if we're gonna get a fair challenge here. Matt, I'm gonna pull off at this roundabout here. Why are you pulling off at the roundabout? The cold weather, the snow, the wet roads are not getting the efficiency from this car so far. So to be sure, I'm gonna pull off in Perth, stop for 10 minutes, and then I'll uh, be behind you. So this is the point at which the convoy does end. Convoy ends here. I'll see you in London. I'll be waiting for you. Um, you're pulling off first, mate. I think I'm gonna be waiting for you. One of the good things about the Tesla Model S is that it does have a pretty large battery. So the usable capacity is 95 kilowatt hours. In the long range, that should give you a range of around 388 miles, and in the performance, 367 miles. 
However, the reality, it's actually not that far off if you go by what this trip computer is now reading. So not being as efficient as Richard was when he was driving it, but I'm doing 267 watt hours per mile. So that works out to about 3.7 miles per kilowatt, which means that I should do a range of 350 miles, which is pretty decent. So I am definitely gonna make it to Gretna Green. And I've got everything planned out here and it reckons that I'll arrive at Gretna Green with 90% of charge and I'll need to stop there for about 35 minutes and then I'll need a second charge at Hilton Park, 25 minutes, and then I'll be able to get to our destination in central London. No problem. I like the way it's all planned out. Dead easy. I wonder how Richard is getting on with his little charging stop. We had 133 miles to get to Gretna Green, but the car's really down to 117 miles, just struggling to get its quoted range out of it. We've just stopped for 14 minutes now. That's taken the car from 50% back up to 76%. That's enough to get us onto Gretna Green, which is another really fast charger, so we're gonna go now. Seeing as I've got a little bit of a lead on Richard, pretty relaxed. I'll talk you through what I think about this car. In terms of the exterior design, well, they launched this car in 2012 and they haven't really changed it that much. However, it still looks pretty modern. Though, let's be honest, it doesn't look anywhere near as good as an Audi. But what about the interior design? Well, like the outside, it hasn't really changed in all these years. Yeah, it still looks modern. It's dominated by this huge portrait screen there, which, interestingly, Tesla's done away with for the all-new Model S, which is coming sometime next year. They've gone landscape. However, it's still got loads of tech. This system is just so good to use. It's got inbuilt Spotify, Google Mapping. It's dead easy to input destinations. It really is good. Downsides, no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Though, unlike with the Audi, you don't really need it because the inbuilt system is just so good. The only faff probably is the temperature settings if you want to do it without voice commands, which you kind of do because voice commands. You have a touch screen to operate, not physical buttons like in the Audi, so it's a bit more of a faff. Another thing that isn't quite so good as the Audi maybe is the digital driver's display. It gives you loads of information, it works well, it just doesn't look as nice really. And that applies to the rest of the cabin. The design, it's all right, it still looks contemporary, but it's just not as cool as the Audi's. Also, it's just not as well made either. That creaked. <laughs> And then you've got some old Mercedes switch gear here and the window switches are from Mercedes. And it's a bit annoying that there's no door bins. You do have this big central cubby area here to store stuff. Another thing to note is that you can't get leather seats at all in this Tesla. The seat covering has been vegan pleasing for a while now. And that's your only choice. Overall, it's all right, this cabin. It's just nowhere near as nice to sit in as that Audi. It's just not. I wonder how Rich is getting on. I'm gonna give him a call and see how far he is away from Gret Green because I've got 38 miles to go. I wonder if we'll overlap and I'll see him there. Hi, oh, you're right. How far have you got? Until Gret Green. I've got 62 miles to go to get to Gret Green. Oh, I wonder if I'm going to get there, charge up and leave before you even get there. It's going to be interesting to know. How many stops does your car reckon you're going to have to do to get all the way to central London? Four more stops. I'm going to try and override the default strategy and cut it finer and try and get away with three stops if I can. I think the charging curve means it will charge fast all the way through the battery. So I may as well charge quite high and be able to do longer journeys and avoid so much of a buffer. Okay, well, we'll see how that plays out. And maybe I'll see you at Gretna Green. He probably won't. Speak to you later. Seeing as I've got a bit of a way to go to Gretna Green and I'm just on the motorway, I may as well tell you some more things about this Tesla Model S. So needless to say, I have the autopilot system on and it's doing the same thing as the Audi, keeping me a safe distance from the car in front and keeping me in lane. This does feel a bit different. You can tell this knows more about what's going on around it. For instance, it can spot lorries and you see them on the display. When you go through roadworks, you see the cones. It'll do that thing where it'll alter the speed limit automatically. And it all works pretty well. There is a slight different way to the way it operates compared to the Audi. Like if you put in the slightest bit of like steering import, then it disengages the auto steer, whereas the Audi would kind of like let you go with the flow and it would automatically blend into working again. This doesn't, it disengages it. Another thing with this is that if you have your hands off the wheel for too long, like the Audi, it will disengage and it will tell you off. But this one gets really cross and it won't allow you to engage the auto steer again until you've stopped the car and restarted it. 
which is kind of good for safety reasons, but it's also annoying at the same time. Now you can actually pay £7,000 to upgrade the autopilot system, so it'll do automatic lane changing and all sorts of stuff, but you don't really need to pay because in the UK, it's not worth seven grand just to be able to change lanes automatically and have some other functions such as being able to summon the car. As for the rest of the driving experience, yeah, it's really nice. This car's comfy, you've got air suspension, like the Audi. It gets adaptive dampers so you can change the different settings. It doesn't feel quite as sophisticated though over bumps. Also, there's a bit more wind noise, but a bit less tire noise because you don't have such big tires. Another thing is that you get this on a twisty road, it's adequate, it handles pretty well, but the Audi will run rings around it. To drive though, this is quite nice. I do like it. I just think that the Audi is a bit more pleasant. Right, I've arrived at Gretna Green. I've got the car plugged into a Tesla supercharger. I've been charging for a wee while now. It had 35 minutes to charge. I'm now down to 15 minutes left to charge. It was charging at a rate of 125 kilowatts. It's dropped slightly now. The battery's getting full to 95 kilowatts. It's progressing nicely though. Charging at a 150 kilowatt hour charger, this car will go from 10% full to 80% full in 40 minutes. And if you do it at a 75 kilowatt charger, it will take 68 minutes to charge that same amount. Now, while I'm waiting for this to do its thing, good thing about Tesla is that you have some things to play around with, like the fart effect wallpaper mm. cushion, which you can position on seats, so when someone sits on it, mm. it makes that noise. Unless that was actually Lewis behind the camera who sort of followed through then. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. As well as that, you've got some entertainment so you can play some games. Fairly basic, however, on the new Tesla Model S that's coming, you will be able to play The Witcher. Of course, if you want to, you can go onto the internet there. And that brings me onto the price of the car. So you can't actually buy this Model S now because they're going to be releasing that new one. This one though, this long range, when it was new, will have cost just under £80,000. Model S Performance, £95,000. Now that brings on to some exciting news because you can now buy a Tesla through CarWow. You can buy a Model 3 through CarWow, which is awesome. Now, if you want to do that, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow. Alternatively, if you just want to visit us at a later date, simply Google Help Me CarWow and me and my team will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. I've done charging and I did notice that when I had some other Teslas next to me charging as well, the charge rate dropped. I think for the newer chargers they do, you don't have that problem because they all work independently. Now I'm gonna go to the other chargers here, the super fast ones to see. Oh yes, look, look, there they are. There they are. <laughs> so they're still charging, but they have caught us up quite a bit. Let's have a quick status update. Hey, Richard. Hello, fancy seeing you here. Yeah, yeah, so we're doing really well. I'm about to head off. Uh, I'm going to be ahead of you, but you've caught up. How much longer are you going to be charging there for? Uh, I think I'm going to be here for about 10 minutes. All right, bye. I'm going to close <laughs> <Bye>. the gap. Bye-bye, <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> Let's get out of here, because I do not want him to win. <laughs> This is gonna be closer than I thought. That was a bit rude of me, but there's no way I wanna lose this. <laughs> there's no way. I'm surprised how quick that thing charges, that Audi charges really quick. I've been driving for quite a long time now. We're over halfway the total journey back to London. So far, this car is averaging 271 watt hours per mile, which equates to around 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. I wonder what that Audi's doing. I think I'm gonna check in with Richard, see how he's getting on. Make sure that he's not going to catch me up. Hello, Matt. Hi, hi. Hope it's going well. I've got a quick question for you. What is your car's energy consumption so far for the whole journey? For the whole journey so far is 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Oh, I'm beating you by pretty much one mile per kilowatt hour. My next question is, how are you getting on? Do you reckon you're close behind or you've had it? Yeah, I think with that last charge, I called up because of the charging speed of this was pretty good. I think I'm about 10 to 15 minutes behind you. Ooh, interesting. So I've got one more stop at Hilton Park, just north of Birmingham. What about you? What's your plan? Well, I've got 137 miles of range. The car wants me to stop at a charger 107 miles, but I'm going to try and push on, skip that charger and go to one a little bit further away, about 130 miles away. Oh, well, we shall see whether you manage that or you run out of electricity. 
The running out of energy is a distinct possibility. The Campbell could pay off. I could potentially come past you. The second option is to take the Audi's stop a bit earlier and do a short two stop strategy. That could also win me the race. Are you going to tell me what you're going to do? I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do, no. All right, so that is it. OK, well, <laughs> we'll see who gets to central London first, shall we? I'll speak to you later. Right, I've got a bit of a dilemma. I'm bursting for a wee. Lewis, you need a wee as well, don't you? Yeah, really bad. So, <laughs> don't know whether we should get off at the next services for a quick wee, plug in while we have a quick wee, and then drive on and see how that works with our journey or do we just press on cross our legs and go for this Hilton services I'm not sure the services are coming up that we need to get off now for having the Wii I don't know what to do what's the decision Lewis can we hold it or shall we um, get off there and have a quick Wii we could lose if we make the wrong choice or we could wet ourselves what is it quick 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 let's win let's go for it go for it Okay, I hope these seats are we resistant. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. There goes the services, we're going past them now. So be it. Oh. So just a quick one. This is where the car wants me to come off and stop for a charger. But we're in a section here which is a 50 miles an hour restricted speed because of roadworks. As you get slower, the car's more efficient. I'm comfortable that I think we can carry on to another charger. Then the car will be at a lower state of charge. Then it's gonna charge faster for longer. And that could get us ahead of Matt. That's our best chance. Thank God, here's a service station. I oh, made it absolutely busting though. Oh, pulling into the supercharger slot now. Here we go, 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 here we go. Park, right, 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 right. Come on, open the charging port. Come on, open charge, open charge. There we go. Right, key, 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 key. Where's the bloody key? Where's the key? God. <laughs> Come on, let's get this thing on charge. I'm about to let go. God, what? It's hardly reach. It won't reach. Why don't they extend the cables? Oh, got it. That's straining. I'm straining. Lewis is straining. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's run. Let's go to the toilet. Look, the car. <laughs> What a relief. I thought I was going to wet myself. Anyway, we've now stopped for the final charge for the Tesla Model S. It's charging away at just over 100 kilowatts, saying I've got about 10 minutes waiting before I can go. And I thought I'd use the opportunity to talk about the rear practicality in this car. So there's a little bit more knee room than in the Audi. You can slide your feet under the seat in front like you can't in the e-tron but the thing that is annoying is there isn't such a distance between the floor and the seat so you do feel a little bit more kind of awkwardly positioned well i can't fault those the headroom yeah it's better people over six foot will be fine in the back of this car also because the car's wide you can carry three people in the back at once much better than in the audi and there's a nice big central seat and the floor is flat so there's plenty of room for everyone's feet what's not so good though is this look there's no through loading there's no armrest or anything no door bins but this car is practical. It's got a big boot, enough room for a stupid motoring journalist such as myself. 744 litres. However, it lacks some of the functionality, so there's no 12 volt socket, there's no shopping bag hooks, but there is some secret storage underneath the false floor, which Richard Simons has just filled with junk. Also, there's some more space in the front boot. 150 litres of space, so I could fit in there without getting stuck, like in the Audi which is good. It's a quick update. It looks like we've just passed Matt. He's at those services as we've just gone past them. So he's in his second stop. We're going to be doing our third. So at this moment, we're actually ahead. Right, the car says that I've got enough charge to complete the trip. So that's it. We are done. I'm going to stop charging and we are going to get on our way. And hopefully we're going to win this challenge. We went past the charger the Audi recommended. We were going to another one further on. But what we're actually going to do is go to another one beyond that. We're only just going to make it, but because of those slower speeds, I think we stand a chance. I think now, even if I just have to slow down a little bit, we'll get there. These chargers are new. They're really powerful. It's going to be everything this car can take. Fingers crossed we make it. Now we're underway again, and I'm just going to put a call into Richard, see how he's getting on. Hey, Matt. Hi, you all right? Yeah, good, thank you. OK, so I've done my final stop. And I've got 131 miles until the final destination. How many miles have you got left? I'm ahead of you, Matt. 107 miles. Oh, oh. 
Okay, so you've jumped ahead of us, but you've got a charge. Yeah. Correct, yeah, so I've still got to make a pit stop. This is going to be really, really close. Okay, so how far to your next charging point, and have you got enough range? I think so, just. 23 miles of range, which is 10%, but we've got 19 miles to go to get to the services. Okay, so it's all going to be on your next charge. I'm going down the M40. Are you going a different route? Stayed on the M6, heading towards the new rugby services, where they've got some brand new, really powerful chargers, and I'm hoping that's going to win me this race. Well, I hope it's not going to win you the race. I'm actually stuck in a 60 mile an hour zone instead of a 70, so this will probably play in your favour as well. This is going to be very, very close. Good luck. Actually, I mean bad luck. Anyway, bye. I've just gone and made a total error. I was supposed to go left at a junction to go south on the M40, but instead I went right. Look, it's now sending me north because I'm having to double back on myself, which has added a little bit of time, not loads, but a little bit of time. And this could be the thing that loses it for me. Honestly, I find it quite difficult following the sat nav the way it zooms out on this. And the bit in here isn't easy to follow as well. Hopefully, I haven't just cocked things up. Right, now I'm just having to double back on myself. Idiot. Stay green lights. Come on! Oh, stress. Come on! Bloody hell. Come on. Don't catch another red. I'm going for the green. <laughs> Don't be on red. Stay green. No, I'm not getting that. I almost did a wrong turn there as well. I want an absolute moron. Here we go. This is it. Let's head the right way. South, not north. Okay, I'm a bit out of breath because we stopped at Rugby Services where they've got new, really fast 350 kilowatt chargers. Because this battery was down to 2% when we plugged in, it charged really fast. As promised, we saw 264 kilowatts. So. Got it plugged in, literally ran to the toilet, ran back, unplugged straight away, got in the car. 56% we charged to, that's enough to get us into London. It's all down to this last final leg. I can't believe I went the wrong way. I wonder if Richard has done something stupid, like overstretch his charge and he never actually made it to the charger. I'll give him a call to find out what's going on. Hey, Matt. Hi, hi. Did you make your charger? Made the charger, yeah, just about. Did you have much range left? No, <laughs> 2%. Did the car not like it? I had warning messages all over the dashboard, but it was fine, I had confidence. Okay then, so you've charged it up and you've got enough charge to get you there. How much charge do you think you'll arrive with? Oh, we're gonna arrive with, I think about 6%. So not much leeway, I'm fine, I've got plenty. <laughs> so I'll be all right. I'll tell you what. We haven't done this before. What I'd like you to do is get Gins who's filming you to just use the WhatsApp and we'll do a shared location just quickly so we can have a quick look at where each other are. So Lewis, tell me what it's looking like. We're neck and neck, pretty you, much. Neck and neck, but on different motorways. Oh my God, okay, so we're neck and neck on different motorways. I know how much further I've got to go and I'm not gonna tell you, <laughs> but I think it's gonna be super close. Now I don't actually want you to know whether I've won or you've won, so I'm gonna now turn off this so you can't get my location. And I suggest you do the same. Okie dokie then, we will see you at the finish line. Let's see what happens, bye. Oh no, this is typical of the M40, lane closures. I wonder if this route choice is gonna backfire. I'm heading into London now, but the motorway I'm on, the M4, is another go slow zone with average speed check cameras. Why do I always get the blooming reduced speed limit? I know the route that Richard's going is just 70 all the way in to London. <sighs> I've left the motorway. I'm now heading into central London from the west. I know that Richard will be coming in from the north. <laughs> it's gonna be so close. Now look, there's the West London Tesla dealership. Now we're into the thick of it. We're in London now, basically. So now it gets congested, it gets slow. I cannot miss a turn, cannot let him win. Here we are then. I'm just moments away from our final destination. And you can see where we're going, the chimneys of Battersea Power Station, which is kind of appropriate considering we're driving electric cars. But is Richard already there before me? And I'm gonna beat him. That's Battersea there. You can see the four towers lit up. All I've got to do is get across the river now. So prepare to turn right. There we go. Turn right, cross the river, and that's it. 
go on, car, go on, car, go. Do not miss this green light. This green light is key, well done. The final leg. There it is. It was so close, no. Please don't be there, Richard. Please don't be there. Just checking behind me. It could even be behind me. It's going to be that close. Is that an Audi e-tron ahead? That's a bloody Audi e-tron just ahead, look. Oh, no! No! We've got just this one turn on the left now. Oh, no way! I cannot believe that. <laughs> that is, he's going to turn in here. If I'd have got ahead of that Honda Jazz, I'd have won it. I wonder if he'll miss his turn. Miss the turn. This is the last corner now. Oh. I cannot believe this. Look! Hello, Richard. Oh my God, look. <laughs> genuinely, genuinely behind me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. I think that's a lose. You are f***ing kidding me. You are absolutely kidding me. You couldn't script that. You could try. That's taken some effort, but I think that counts as a win. If I hadn't taken the wrong turn, I would have won. You utter, utter idiot. Oh, Richard. <laughs> I cannot believe that. I cannot believe how close it was. When I saw your tail lights, which are really distinctive on this car, I was yeah. like, oh my God, you were one car, one car ahead of me. You couldn't have planned it. <laughs> any closer could you if you wanted to try and do that couldn't have done it unbelievable i unbelievable. actually thought i was going to win that i really really did i thought i had just about enough time even yeah. though you did not i actually cocked up i took a wrong turn on the m40 i went north instead of south and so i added a little bit of time not much but if i hadn't cocked that up i would have beaten you you had me running i ran back from the toilet it was chaotic it was absolute carnage and i've arrived with actually some fairly spare battery if I'd have been quicker, I'd have been a few minutes earlier as well. Could yep. have saved five, ten minutes easily. No, but we can all play that game. Right? I just went with the Tesla system. Yeah. I charged the car fully as it told me to. I had plenty of spare battery. It was a, a walk in the park for me. The only thing that cocked it up was me, and that was it. So this car, I reckon in your hands, you would have beaten you yeah. in that for sure. I think it would. We pushed this pretty much to the limit at one point down to kind of two, one percent. We went beyond the Audi suggested charging, then another one, then another one. Um, so we pushed it pretty hard. We stopped as briefly as possible. Lucky it does charge pretty fast. Barely time for the Wii, but yeah, it did it. It's great. And do you know what I found out? I actually stopped in total in the journey for about an hour. Yes. So an hour spent charging over a journey of over 500 miles, which is kind of the stops you're going to do anyway. Yeah. But I reckon if I'd been in a diesel car, a petrol car, I'd have probably maybe stop for about 45 minutes. So really, there's yeah. nothing in it. And with this Tesla, I've got to say, absolutely dead easy, superchargers, plug it in. It just works it all out for you. It can be simple. simple, yeah. I think you had a slightly less stressful experience. So we did three stops, uh, but it still totaled about an hour. And I think if I did it again now, now that I know a bit more about the car's behavior, I could do it even faster. But I could probably still beat it with that. Well, there you go. That was fun. It's close. And now I'm very tired. I'm tired as well. Can we go home yet? We can definitely go home now. Cool. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you want to watch some more electric car range tests, there's some videos there. Click on those. Now, if you actually want to buy an electric car and you need some help, click on that box there to go to Carwire to check out our EV hub. You can look at all our different reviews of different electric cars, check out offers on the cars. And if you buy a car, an electric car through Carwire, we will give you five months subscription to BP Pulse and 500 miles worth of free charge. Thanks for watching.